Hey guys, it's Will from Tested. It is time for another edition of the Video Mailbag. This is where you post your inane, interesting, or informative questions on formspring.me slash tested, and then I answer them off the cuff without any preparation whatsoever. Uh, so let's get started with the first question from you, the internet viewers, listeners, readers. Well, I don't know what to call you guys, but the internet people. I'm in the market for a high-capacity 250 gigabyte or more MP3 player. Extra features are of no concern. I don't care if it's touch or not. Literally, as long as I can put MP3s on and listen to them through headphones, I'm happy. Any suggestions? Uh, you know, there actually aren't a ton of people making big, high, super capacity MP3 players these days. The iPod caps out, the classic iPod, the one with the dial, caps out at 160 gigabytes. I did a little looking around, did a little bit of preparation. Seems like the Arcos 5 is pretty much your best bet. Uh, based on the user reviews, people seem to like it at Amazon and Newegg. Uh, it's uh, like $399. It's a little bit expensive. $339, rather. But, I mean, if you want 250 gigabytes to hold every song you've ever bought or stolen or whatever, that's uh, what I'm going to recommend based on what you guys recommend. The next question is funny. Hey, Will, I'm a bit embarrassed to ask, but any suggestions or warnings if I decide to visit some less reputable sites online? I wanted to know if there's any sites I need to avoid or things I should keep in mind when looking at adult content. Thanks. Uh, so this was an anonymous question, unsurprisingly. I mean, basically, the general rules for safe browsing apply, right? Uh, don't install things. Don't click on those ads, the ones that say your computer is infected, all that. Make sure you have some antivirus. Firewall's not a bad idea. Um, it, you know, using the, the secret sessions, the you know, Chrome's, uh, I can't remember what it's called, but Chrome has a mode that's basically incognito mode. Safari has something similar. Firefox has something similar. Those will prevent the sites from saving anything on your PC, which may help you, you know, not get found out by your uh, loved ones later. Prevent embarrassing incidents when the kids log on to use the computer and they auto-complete something horrifying. So uh, that's my recommendation. Antivirus, firewall, uh, use the incognito mode, and lock the door. The next question is about email address prejudice. If you don't listen to the podcast, we've talked about this the last couple of weeks. Basically, I feel like if you use the, the email address that comes with your ISP, you're setting yourself up for an annoyance in the future when you have to email everybody to be like, hey guys, I changed my ISP. I'm not using ISPY anymore. I'm using ISPX now, so update your address books. That's why I like to use Gmail. I mean, but Gmail, Hotmail, Yahoo, all good. Here's the question. I use Gmail as my default email. But I have a common name and was a little slow, so I couldn't use my name as my address. So I still use my Hotmail account when I want to send resumes or whatever, and then I forward that to my Gmail. Is that acceptable? You know, I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with Hotmail. I don't have a problem with any email. I just think that if you're a professional and you're using something, something, something at yourisp.com or isp.net or whatever, it kind of looks a little, reflects a little poorly on you. So I, I recommend against that. The next question is about coffee. Question about the toddy cold brewer. When the big brewing filter thing is on top of the carafe, how tall is it? Will it fit in my fridge? Will it make a difference if it filters overnight on my countertop instead? So the toddy folks, I actually talked to, they posted in the comments after we posted that video, and they said leaving it on the countertop is fine during the brew process. You just want to refrigerate it after it's closed. And uh, when, you, when you have it running in the fridge with just the carafe, it's about that tall. It's probably too tall to fit in your fridge with the carafe and the thing on. But, you know, because the rubber stopper is in the bottom of the, of the brewer, you don't actually need to have it on the craft in the fridge. So, uh, I mean, basically the craft is about the same size as a half gallon of milk in the United States. The next question, another coffee. Coffee questions are popular. I guess we posted a coffee video this week, so we're getting a lot of coffee questions. Uh, could you do a tested roundup of some quality drip coffee makers? For those of us who are too sleepy in the morning to use one of your crazy methods. I don't know how I feel about that. Um, they sound like a, these all sound great, but also like a lot of work for 6 a.m. Thanks. Um, I don't know if they're crazy methods, but um, I, I, you know, I, I like to make coffee that tastes good. So uh, the AeroPress is pretty fast once you get used to it, but it's not good for making a bunch of coffee for a bunch of people. The Chemex is the closest thing I've done to a drip method. It's, I mean, it is essentially a steeping drip. Uh, French press is good for quick methods. 
If you want something, you can set the timer on the night before and press the button. Uh, we've actually, we actually use a Cuisinart uh, kind of conical filter machine. It's, it's just fine. It's not anything amazing or spectacular, and grinding your beans that far in advance is going to kind of decrease the taste of your coffee. But if you're willing to make that sacrifice because, you know, you don't want to have to work some stuff in the morning, then, then so be it. So um, I just like conical drip filters if you're recommending just a normal drip machine. And, and uh, I mean, we can definitely test some, but in the meantime, if you want a new drip, uh, go to Amazon, check user reviews is what I would do. Oh, oh, one other thing about the coffee makers. I will say I've had really, really bad experiences with, the, with those grind and brew machines. It seems like a really great idea because you can dump the beans in, set the timer, it'll grind in the morning, pour the beans into the chute, the coffee will come out, and everything should be perfect, right? The problem is usually the steam from the water when it comes into the pot goes up the chute where the grinder is, and it gets all clogged with, uh, with well, kind of damp grinds. So it's no, it sounds like a great idea, but isn't really in practice. So avoid the grind and brew. If somebody else has tried one recently and they're better, let me know and we'll, we'll talk about it and test it out. Lots of tech questions this week. The next question is, how do you feel about replacing traditional pizza sauce with pesto? Tasty or not so much? I, I like pesto as an occasional change from the tomato sauce. It's, I don't have strong feelings one way or the other. It, it's, it's fine. Um, more tech, the tech questions keep on coming. Uh, what's my favorite drink? This is somebody from the UK because they used a U. Or uh, what's my favorite hangover cure? Um, I like uh, beer. I like Racer 5 IPA. I like bourbon, traditionally single barrel, neat. Um, and my favorite hangover cure is not to drink so much that I get a hangover. Also, I drink water and aspirin when I've made poor decisions. Next question is about uh, the, the creepy toe shoes. I'm not actually wearing them today. I don't think you can see that, but um, I mean, I've worn them, I guess, three days this week. I read the instructions after putting them on and wearing them for a day and a half. And basically they say for the first week or so, wear them one or two hours a day. Um, I was getting some weird chafing between my toes and on my heels. And when I take a day off, then, then it gives my skin a time to recover. They're really comfortable. It's kind of funny. I'm, I'm actually a little sore in the legs. This is a weird thing, but like my calves and my, my upper thighs are both um, much more sore than I would expect just from changing shoes. But I actually really like walking in them. Uh, it's a little weird in public because people kind of look at you funny for fairly obvious reasons, but they feel like you're walking around barefoot. I'll probably post a full review, not next week, the week after would be my guess. So uh, keep, keep your eyes peeled. More tech questions. The tech questions keep rolling on. Are the latest improvements in mail enhancement going to be tested? No. Did you catch the hidden messages in all the questions I posted? I love you, Will Smith. And then it's like the smiley face with the D instead of the parentheses. I did not catch the hidden messages. So, um, no. Smiley face with the D. The next question is about TV. This is actually a technology question. I'm really excited. With Lost running out, Lost is over, and TV seems to have no point anymore, am I a TV watcher, or do I scavenge on services like Hulu and iTunes? I actually do a little bit of everything. I've watched, uh, I've had a TiVo in the house for more than a decade now, I guess. Um, you know, I use that for a lot of kind of catching normal TV, and then I watch it on my own terms. Uh, we have an Apple TV in the house that we use for movie rentals, stuff like that. I don't really buy anything from the iTunes music store. But we do do a fair amount of, of renting kind of newer releases or stuff that we don't want to buy. Um, I still buy a fair number of discs for stuff that I really like. And, um, I mean, we, I, do, I don't really watch the web services a whole lot. We do a lot of Netflix instant streaming, not so much Hulu. But that's more because Hulu is kind of inconvenient. Uh, you know, there's no Xbox plug-in or something like that than because I don't like Hulu. It's just I like to watch TV in the living room, not in front of a computer. And I don't actually have a computer hooked up to my TV in the living room. Ah, this is a site question. It's very exciting. Lately, the newest forum posts are all articles. Should articles go in their own section or something so they don't completely overtake the forum? I think that's a challenge to you guys to post more stuff in the forums so that it spreads out more. Uh, I mean, it kind of happens. I've noticed that there's kind of a cycle throughout the day. So uh, in the morning when we posted a lot of news stories and there's a lot of commenting on the news stories and that bumps them up to the top of the list. As the day progresses and the news stories get a little bit older and we post fewer stories in the afternoon... Uh, you know, the more, more forum posts bump up. So I, I'm not too worried about it. If you guys think it's a real problem, let's talk about it in the comments and, uh, and see what everybody thinks. I, I feel like it's okay. I feel like our forums are moving pretty well now. So, And I appreciate you guys coming. 
more site questions. We're getting a lot of site questions this week, and I think I've had one or maybe two technology questions so far. So this one is, usually you guys have about five or six stories a day go up untested. Will this stay the same once you're not in preview anymore? I mean, really, we don't have a, I mean, we, ha we like to have a minimum number of stories and videos and stuff like that. I, I mean, when there's more interesting stuff happening, we post more stuff. August is traditionally the most boring month of the year for technology. So, I mean, it's kind of slow right now. I, I, it's not really a preview mode or anything like that. I mean, probably it's, this is pretty much what we can do with two people. When we get more people, more resources, have more time, then there'll be more stuff on the site. But we're never going to go to, like, posting 65 stories a day just because I, I feel like I'd rather have a site that only really shows the stuff that I'm super interested in and without all the filler that kind of shows up on some of those other sites. <laughs> this is a form spring question. Out of all the questions you normally see with this feature, how many do you read and how many do you skip? Um, I, I think I read the majority. I read probably well more than well over half. I don't necessarily get all the way down the queue because there's sometimes 60 or 70 questions posted a week. Uh, but, and there's a fair number of dupes. So I don't read duplicates. Uh, I don't read things that are patently offensive. Uh, I don't read things that I don't have an answer for, really. So, um, so that's the answer. I would say 60 to 75% on a good week, not counting the stuff that gets below the, the refresh. If you want to have your question answered, the best time to do it is Friday morning. Post, send me a question on Friday morning. The next question is about in-ear headphones. And it is, hi, I'm looking for some affordable in-ear headphones when I go overseas later this month. Any advice on what I should buy? Thanks in advance. Uh, you know, I'm using a pair of Shure... Uh, let me make sure I get the model number right, because this is tricky. They are uh, SE115Ms. Uh, that's the iPhone-specific model. If you don't have an iPhone, you don't need that. All it does is give you volume up and volume down on the remote. Uh, but I really like them a lot. They plug into my phone. They have a microphone, so I can talk to people you know, when I'm walking or whatever. Uh, they go in your ear nicely, and they have this new kind of earbud thing that jams in there. The, the plug is a different material. It's very soft and very comfortable. I can wear them for a really long time without any discomfort, so I like them a lot. The next question is about Norm. It says, you answer all the questions we ask each week. Can Norm be given a shot or a guest spot? If you want Norm to guest spot, send him a note. Tell him you'd like to see him do a mailbag, and, uh, and we can make that happen. He's doing a Comic Mind podcast right now, so he's not available, unfortunately. I'd pull him over here. The next question is about PC building, which is really apt, because this time last week we were building a PC. It is... Kits that let you build a motherboard and processor and fans, that I guess that include a motherboard, processor, and fans, are really handy. Do you recommend any? And do they make any for the whole PC build process? Um, I, you know, I, I'm not a huge fan of the, of the kit build. I mean, a lot of times you can go to Newegg or something like that, and they'll have a bundle deal. Amazon does the same thing, I think. So, you, you know, you, you choose the processor you want, then they have a couple of deals that are available for different motherboards with that particular processor, and you might get 10 or $20 off. Uh, I think that's probably a pretty good deal. The, I, I don't feel like the, the old school kind of Tiger Direct style kit machines, like I like to be able to choose my components individually. I like to get the best motherboard for me and the best processor for me and the best case for me. And I, I wouldn't want to kind of, I, I mean, I feel like those are kind of like the, the weekly specials at a lot of restaurants where they take the stuff that didn't sell on Wednesday and cram it into Thursday's lunch special. So I, I, I'm not a huge fan. I think it's better to do the research and figure out what you want and get exactly what you want rather than what the store is trying to sell. Uh, the next question is about gaming. Under what conditions do you find yourself playing PC games instead of console games, or vice versa? It's a really good question. I mean, clearly there's a few PC-only games, there's a few console-only games. There's a lot of PC and console games where, where you can pick and choose whichever platform you want. Um, I usually play multiplayer stuff on the PC depending on what kind of game it is. So, you know, Team Fortress, clearly a PC game. StarCraft, clearly a PC game. Uh, but, you know, things like Kane and Lynch, I'd probably play that on the console. Uh, Single-player experiences for me, I like in the living room because I have, you know, big sound and a big giant screen and all that kind of stuff. You know, and I can sit on the couch, which is a little more comfortable than sitting in the office. I, 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 um, on the other hand, I, I have really enjoyed playing games like Torchlight and stuff like that on the, on the laptop. I haven't played those on my laptop, so sometimes I'll sit in the living room on the laptop and play games, which seems kind of sad when I say it on camera. Facebook or Foursquare, what's your poison? I have an account on Facebook, I have an account on Foursquare, I don't really use either. So, there you have it. What brands or blends of coffee do you recommend for that way of making coffee? I've been a big fan of Lavazza, uh, but I am looking to branch out. 
you know, I, I like to support the local roasters just because I feel like if they're doing, you know, making kind of a specialty coffee then that I can get locally and it's fresh roasted and all that stuff, then that's great. I, I like to support those guys. I've also had great luck uh, with Whole Foods brand coffee. Their generic kind of Colombian brand blend and their espresso and French roast are all kind of great coffees. I've enjoyed them all. Um, I think probably the French roast or the espresso blend would be my preference in the toddy. But a lot of people do like a milder coffee for that particular device. So, uh, you know, try a bunch of different stuff and let me know what you think. Uh, as always, your mileage may vary. So that does it for this week's edition of the Video Mailbag. Uh, for Tested I'm Will, as always, if you have questions, you can get them answered, maybe, by sending them to formspring.me slash tested. Post it anonymously, and we'll answer them on, uh, well, Saturday or Sunday sometime. It goes up over the weekend. So thanks for watching, guys. See you guys next week.